I'd like to uh, move on in our program. We're going to be doing the uh, famous ACE elevator pitch next. And for those of you that have attended ACE for the next, last six years or so, tonight's MC really needs no introduction. Um, many of you know Chris Holman. He's an entrepreneur, media personality, and business owner. He started uh, one of his businesses out of the trunk of his car in 1987, and he has been promoting Michigan small businesses ever since. He has a, um, hosted a variety of radio programs and TV shows. He continues to host a statewide business show, the Michigan Business Beat, through the michiganbusinessnetwork.com, which he launched two years ago. And many of you may remember that launch because I think we talked about it at, in, at our summer event, wasn't it? Yes, it was. He was one of the founders of the Michigan Celebrate Small Business event and has been emceeing that event since its inception 10 years ago. Chris has served as the Michigan Small Business Advocate, and he is the past chairman of the National Small Business Association, the oldest national small business advocacy organization in the United States. Please welcome Chris Holman back to the stage for ACE. Well, thank you, Diane. That is, uh, it's tremendous. It's tremendous to be here. Um, and uh, you, will, you will be very glad to know, Peter, that uh, in a room full of entrepreneurs, no one's going to get hit by Stevens rockets because every day they move at warp speed anyway. So they're going to be able to get out. Two little housekeeping pieces, and they're sometimes distraction. I wear the glasses because my mom told me it added dignity. I don't need them, all right? <laughs> But I do wear them. And the other is this little device here, which ironically, even a guy my age, every now and then some young girl will say, I, I like your thumb ring. Um, <laughs> I burst the bubble by saying it's a medical device. Uh, I have a thing called Duprin's contraction, and this keeps that ligament, anybody who's experienced it, from moving in so that I can have uh, my surgery after golf season. So everybody's got their priorities, right? Um, Diane said I brought a, a very unique energy here. Um, I'm, I'm worried about who else has been described that way. But, uh, but I do because, quite frankly, uh, you know, the energy comes from you. And coming into a room this packed with this much energy, it's infectious. And so I get up here and I start getting excited. And I get excited for you, with you, and certainly about you. And you're going to feel the same feelings. One year I made the mistake of, on the, on the drive home, remaining in this semi-froth and taking that unique energy into my household, and uh, the result was my wife beat me up. Um, so at this point, we've got a couple things to do. We're gonna, this is really a fun piece of the evening, as a matter of fact. And, and uh, to begin with, I'd like to invite the judges up, and if they would, sit in the judges' uh, penalty box here, right in front. Um, they're going to be, this is a great group of people, and I'm going to introduce them in, a, in a, uh, just a minute, but there's a great deal of expertise at this table, and you're going to hear about it, as a matter of fact, in, in just a second. And uh, let me also bring up the, uh, the entrepreneurs uh, to take their seat as well. So if you would come up here and sit, uh, I assume you've been given an order in which to sit. Come on. Now, I know there's more than one of you. Come on up. All right, I will tell you what's going to happen here tonight. Each, each one of these uh, wonderful people is going to get up, and they're going, to, they're going to be presenters. They're going to present a three-minute presentation, their elevator speech, if you will, about the company, the business idea. Uh, in that elevator speech format, we're going to play it out as if we're standing in line at a coffee shop, and they introduce themselves. And then they have three minutes, basically, to get me to invest and get you uh, interested. The judges, at the same time, they have a scoring sheet in front of them, and they'll be listening for a number of things. A clear identification of the speaker and the company. A statement of the market pain and their solution. Uh, an explanation of the product or service, their stage of development, and competitive advantages. And then finally, scoring, the, uh, each judge is going to evaluate the pitches on the criteria that I just mentioned. Uh, the company which receives the highest total score 
will be declared the winner. And we'll take, a, after all this proceeding goes on, we'll take a little uh, break while some other things are done. Diane will take the stage again, and then we'll come back at about 8 o'clock and announce the winner. And the winner will take possession of the coveted Ace Cup. The Ace Cup, folks. And you all wore a nice outfit, so when you skate around here and hold it over your heads, it's kind of the Stanley Cup of entrepreneurial, uh, Michigan entrepreneurial competition. And so that's going to be a great deal of fun. Uh, so let me introduce the judges before we get going. Lauren Bigelow, if you would, just kind of give the Queen's wave and turn around. There you go. Lauren Bigelow, CEO of Growth Capital Network. Oh, no, I'm not doing anything technical up here. All right. You want me to forward the slide? Where, uh, Just use the down button. So that's... So you, you give me a cue as to one. Oh, I got you. Okay, so we're moving on this. Slides, yes. I got you. Is that right? All right, so my apologies again for arriving a little late. This is pro probably part of the rehearsal. Uh, Terry Cross, founder, Windward Associates, LLC, last year's keynote speaker. As a matter of fact, at Ace in Michigan's favorite angel investor. And, Terry, I'm not going to ask how you get that designation, okay? It has nothing to do with me. I know nothing. Uh, Dale Grogan, Managing Director of the Michigan Accelerator Fund. Dale, good to see you. And uh, Mark Hooper, CPA, founding member of Andrews, Hooper & Pavlik, and uh, board member of Capital Community Angels and a Good Friend. Mark? So those are our esteemed panel members, and we have some very good ones. So now let me introduce who will be up here presenting tonight in this order. Uh, Jeff Johnson, if you'd stand up, supported uh, uh, Intelligence LLC of East Lansing. Jeff, good to see you. Uh, Michael Curley, Soletics of Grand Rapids. Uh, Angskar Struther, A2B Bike Share of Ann Arbor. All right, this is going to test my ability. Naren, Bella Subramian. How did I do? 75%. Yeah, that's all I, that's all I want in life, honestly. Uh, of of uh, Hospital Connect of Farmington Hills. Uh, Naren, good to have you here. Jason Beal, uh, Regain Go of Detroit. And finally, James Frederick, Native Traits, LLC of Kalamazoo. Now, in the past, I've had a microphone up here to hand to the presenter. Is there a roving mic down there? All right, well, I think they may. Do they have to be touched on the bottom or anything? You, you're queuing them up. He's queuing them up. I have found it's best not to get in the professional's way. All right, so with that, we will start uh, tonight's elevator speeches with uh, Jeff Johnson. Uh, Jeff, if you'll come up here, we're going to be standing in line at the coffee shop. Uh, I will turn to you, and you'll have three minutes to wow me. Boy, they call this a, the express lane. I know. Can you believe it? Nice tie, by the way. Hey, I'm Jeff Johnson. I'm from Supported Intelligence, and I'm the lead developer. And so basically what I do is I help businesses to make important decisions faster, easier, and better. Now, every day, businesses make complex decisions, and to the extent that they analyze them, they use simplistic and broken methods. These methods ignore the fact that smart managers can and will change course as conditions change, and that there are dozens or even hundreds of possible scenarios that you have to consider. Now, in order to use these methods, managers are forced to make a set of unrealistic assumptions about their decision, and they must ignore a lot of information that they have. And now, it's not their fault, though. The problem is that these methods are the best that have been available until now. My company, Supported Intelligence, has developed and now sells a breakthrough software product that lessens and even removes many of the restrictions of these current methods. Our rapid recursive toolbox, developed right here in Michigan, is based on a patent pending method that for the first time ever brings the power of recursive methods to the practical business world. Now these methods allow us to solve complex business problems by breaking them into a series of small problems, which makes it much, much easier to consider hundreds of possible scenarios, natively handle asymmetric risk and real options, and account for the fact that you are smart enough to change when conditions change. Now, these methods were described theoretically by Nobel laureates and other award-winning scholars, but it wasn't until we released the Rapid Recursive Toolbox in December of 2012 that they were finally available on a commercial scale. Now, you might be thinking, couldn't this apply to a lot of decisions? And you're definitely right. But we, right now, we are focusing on financial applications, and our target customers are at investment banks, venture capital firms, and hedge funds. 
we've already completed work with Merrill Lynch, and a company that we valued from Spartan Innovations is taking our report with them when they talk to investors in California in the next few weeks. Our software is currently available on a power user platform for licensing fees from $50 to $1,000. And where we've seen a lot of interest is companies that like the product, but want a custom-tailored solution, which we provide to them starting at $2,500. Now, our company fits into the business analytics market, which is a large and growing market with $34 billion in activity last year. We expect $4 million in revenue by our third year with a net profit of $1.2 million, and third-party research has estimated $80 million in revenue from the U.S. market alone by our fifth year. Now, Chris, if you've got a minute, I'd love to introduce you to Patrick Anderson. He's our founder and the inventor of the Rapid Recursive Toolbox. He's also the founder and CEO of one of the nation's premier economic consulting firms. And he wrote a book called The Economics of Business Valuation, which was published last year by Stanford University Press and outlines the theory of the Rapid Recursive Toolbox and many of its applications. Why don't you grab your coffee and come join us, and we can tell you more about how our Rapid Recursive method is revolutionizing the way businesses and individuals make decisions. Jeff, thank you. Jeff Johnson. Good job, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Johnson supported Intelligence LLC East Lansing, and so happens, Jeff. I've stood in coffee lines with Pat before, so we do, we do know each other. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Michael Curley, uh, Soletics of Grand Rapids. Michael. So how are you doing? I'm <laughs> doing all right. My name is Michael. You look like you're an avid skier, am I right? I do ski. You do ski, good. Well, I do as well, okay? And one of the most frustrating things that I deal with is not having a pair of gloves that actively keeps my hands warm, but not too warm, keeps them dry, and has enough dexterity to actually let me grip the poles or to do anything relatively useful. Of the over 100 million pairs of gloves that were sold last year, I could not find just one pair that didn't have these issues. And you know, I'm not alone. I've personally talked to over 870 people on the slopes, and the vast majority of them agree and would pay good money for a product that did not have these issues. Well, I'm actually the CEO of a company called Celetics, and we are aiming to solve these problems. We're building a glove system that takes thermoregulation sensors of the body, so it'll take moisture and temperature readings to inform a smart heating element. What this basically means is that your hands will always be the same temperature no matter how cold it is outside, no matter how active or inactive you are. Um, we didn't start this way, actually. Um, this is a class project at Grand Valley State University. It started about a year and a half ago. But over the last year and a half, we formed into a very dedicated partnership of three core members who have actually recently seen some success. We won first place student grand prize at Accelerate Michigan, and we were semifinalists at the International Business Plan Competition at Harvard, started by Steve Blank. Now, in terms of applications, it's not stuck just to, just to gloves. We can apply this technology to an entire bodysuit, if you will, um, jackets, pants, hats, anything that would use this. Um, what's really exciting is that we've had interest from people with Renaud syndrome so that they can um, actively keep their hands warm and not have to worry about missing out time with the family. Um, we're currently in the prototype development stage. We're working with a key partner, Keystone Solutions, who are developing proprietary construction and algorithms for the software inside. Um, right now, we should have a product launch in the mid-spring. Um, and with that, we would like to license the technology out to a Nike or to a North Face. The most exciting thing about all of this is we only require $100,000 to go to market, Chris. So, again, I'd like you to take your coffee, and I'd love to talk more about this. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Michael Curley from uh, Soletics. Uh, and, and I want to tell you that while you were chatting, the lady left with your latte. So, sorry. Sorry about that piece. All right, next up is uh, Angsgar Struther from A2B Bike Share of Ann Arbor. Is that, is that your bike out there on the rack? Yeah, actually it is. That's how I got here. So do you know what bike sharing is? I don't. Well, bike sharing is a quick, convenient way to get around town. You're able to walk up to the station, pay. Once you're approved, the bike is dispensed to you, and then you're able to ride around town and then return it to any other station. Bike sharing is great. People love it for that convenience, that low-cost options. Cities love it, too, because it's capital efficient, lower CO2 emissions, and create greener, more connected environments. New York City recently launched 6,000 bikes and saw over 6 million rides in the first year. Really popular. With all these great benefits, you might ask the simple question, why isn't bike sharing everywhere? And that's exactly what we did. And what we found, simply put, is that bike sharing isn't profitable. It costs $5,000 per bike in capital costs and $2,500 a year to operate. 
That's a lot for a bike, don't you agree? I do agree. And that's exactly what we started. And I'm Ansgar Strozer, founder and CEO of Eddie Bike Bikeshare, and that's what we founded on, figuring out that issue. And what we figured out by talking to hundreds of customers, to government officials, that we could come up with a solution to actually make bike sharing profitable. Yes, profitable. And we de have developed technology, patent pending, that does that. And we've actually launched this in Lansing, 10 bikes along Michigan Ave. What we're looking to do now is raise $300,000 to take this to the next phase, to be able to launch in other cities. And because we're profitable, we're able to change the way we launch in other cities. Instead of doing the long, arduous government RFP process, which can take several years, we're instead able to gain access to a community through private or public partners, do a branding, sell the branding rights, which New York City did for $41 million, do a membership pre-sale, and then launch the system profitably. So I'd love to talk to you about how you can get involved in a company that will have strong returns, but also build healthier, greener communities across this country. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ashley. Hangs Gar Struther, uh, A2B Bike Share from Ann Arbor, Michigan. As a matter of fact, you were kind of headlines in Lansing when you guys brought that uh, bike share up there. Um, Naran Bella Subramaniam. Ha. Huh. All right. I feel safer now with you behind me in line. <laughs> okay. How you doing? Very, very well. It's been quite a wait here, right? It has. In fact, you know, I just want to tell you the business that we are in. We are about reducing wait lines and actually saving money for hospital emergency rooms. I see your thumb being hurt. I'm sure, you know, when you were probably as a patient in a hospital emergency room, you must have wondered, why does it take this long for the hospital to decide on your admission decision? That is, whether to send you home or to put you on an observation status or put you in their inpatient bed, right? When a patient is waiting in a hospital emergency room, what happens in the background is most hospitals, in about 30% of case, they are consulting with an outsourced vendor on your medical necessity and your admission status. And this is costing hospitals $2.3 billion each year. Our company, Hospital Connect, has a market-ready, first and only medical necessity software that has a mobile platform that will allow hospitals to do this admission decision all in-house. Hospital Connect provides a standardized process and a set of decision support tool that will allow hospital physicians to do this medical necessity decision without depending on the outside consultant and save 75% of their current operating cost. So instead of paying the outside consultant $300 for every patient, they pay Hospital Connect $75. I'll tell you, Chris, there's a lot of hospitals across the country very open to this value proposition. In fact, we are talking to three hospitals and very close to making an agreement to have them as our beta site. And there are two early stage angel investment companies who are also willing to invest in Hospital Connect as soon as we sign that agreement with the hospital. Chris, I've been in healthcare for over 15 years, and this is my second business startup. And I'm very excited about this business proposition. You know why? Our business plan talks about breaking even in year two and making a total 50 million revenue over the next four years. And if you are in healthcare or if you're an investor interested in investing in healthcare IT platform, we would love to sit with you and talk about it. And by the way, I'm Naren Balasubramaniam, founder of Hospital Connect. <laughs> I knew that. All right, now, thank you very much. Hospital Connect of Farmington Hills. And now Jason Beal, uh, Regain Go of Detroit. Come on, get in line, Jason. All right. You been here long? Hey, I'm going to stay here a little bit longer. It's too cold to go outside. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jason Beal. And I wonder, are you a homeowner that struggled to try to find a home contractor for proven projects around the house? Me and everyone else. Pretty much. Yeah. Now, how much information did you have about the contractor before you called? Not a lot. It's a terrible problem that we found, the lack of transparency between homeowners and home contractors, which leads to unrealistic expectations from the homeowner about price and length of job, contractor obligations, which leads to terrible business for the contractor. 
creating, because they're spending time, wasting time and money submitting bids to homeowners that are uninformed about their services, creating a terrible experience for both parties. Now, let me ask you, don't you wish there was a website out there that gave you more information about a contractor other than just reviews like Angie's List? Absolutely. Any help. Any help. Exactly. Now, what if there was a website out there that showed you before and after photos of jobs that were completed in your specific neighborhood, showed you where those jobs were completed on a map and by which contractors? Not to mention, what if they also provided information like cost and length of job reviews, but also historical data like how many permits that contractors pulled over the last 50 years? Now, wouldn't that add a lot better experience between you and the contractor and create, uh, solve this problem? I would guess it would, yeah. That's my company, Regango. Regango is an information platform that connects homeowners and contractors in a way like never before. Our patent-pending technology, the virtual yard sign, which takes, takes the concept of a physical yard sign, which we all know, and puts it online, where each virtual yard sign represents a, a job completed in a neighborhood that's searchable uh, by the homeowner, by a pin on the map that also represents before and after photos and uh, information and also historical data. Now, this wonderful website, guess what? It's absolutely free to you, the homeowner. Unlike my competition, Angie's List, we do not charge the homeowners. The contractors pay us for packages of these yard signs at the rate of about $10 per month per yard sign. Now, we reach the contractors by partnering with contractor associations like the Home Builders Association that has both local and national chapters that allows us to grow the business. And we have similar strategies to reach homeowners. And actually, one of them is a very inventive technology, allows us to reach homeowners like yourself absolutely free. Now, the, the local home builders associations liked what we're doing so much, but they've already sent us over 350 of their contractors to be part of our beta launch that's going to occur in the next 60 days. The reason being because there's a great opportunity for us because contractors spend over $6.5 billion a year to reach homeowners like yourself because homeowners like yourself spend over $300 billion a year on home improvement projects. Now, let me ask you, with that kind of money being spent, don't you want to know the most information you can about a contractor that you're entrusted with your largest investment? Yeah, I certainly do. Yeah, and we believe so as well. Now, this wonderful website was created by myself and my partner, Clark Covert. I have a background in finance, sales, and marketing, and, and ran a promotional company that did over $10 million in revenue. And Clark ran a construction company that rehabbed over 30 homes in three years, and he also built a website around this entire experience. We believe Regango will be worth over $10 million by year three, and would return seven to ten times uh, investment for our investors in year five. Now, can you grab this coffee? I'm going to grab a coffee. Let's stay indoors. Let's stay warm, and let's talk some more. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> All Thanks, right. Jason. Thank you. Yeah. Jason Beal, Regango of Detroit. And it's interesting. It's a little spooky when somebody gets up here and knows about it. I just finished the kitchen, and I'm doing a bath. <laughs> It's a little scary. Were you in my house? Was that you? Was that you? All right. Appreciate that. Next up, James Frederick. He is uh, Native Traits LLC of Kalamazoo. James? How you doing? Pretty good. Can you believe the crazy weather we've been having these days? <laughs> no. Well, I'm a 30-year veteran of the seed industry, and I can tell you farmers don't know what to expect next. One year it's drought. The next year it's raining too much. We got crazy cold out there now. It'll probably be too hot next summer. I've just founded a company called Native Traits, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Native Traits. We can't change the weather, but what Native Traits does, and Native Traits is actually my second startup, and I'm the CEO, Native Traits can change the crops that farmers grow, make them more resilient, resistant to drought, tolerant of cold and heat. That's what we do. But it starts by a trip to the seed bank. The USDA operates several seed banks, but the one for corn has over 20,000 strains of corn, old varieties, heirloom varieties, uh, Indian corn, corn from the tropics. I'm thinking heat tolerant, corn from Canada. All this is available for our use, and we have a proprietary screening technology which allows us to screen this material, identify a native trait, what we call a native trait, which is a naturally occurring trait. It's not a GMO. And we can use that trait to transfer it to a modern variety of corn and instill drought resistance or cold tolerance, whatever the trait might be. Now, I can guess what you're probably thinking. You're wondering, how can a little company from Kalamazoo, Michigan, compete with all those gigantic multinational seed companies with their 
GMOs and genetically engineered corn? The answer is, we don't compete, we collaborate. We have signed agreements with six major international seed companies effectively embedding our technology in their product development pipeline. This allows us, as a small company, to participate in what is a $6 billion a year genetics trait industry, and that's just for corn alone, and that's just in the United States. The cool thing that goes along with that is we have these wonderful relationships with seed companies. We don't want to get too wedded with, to any one of them right now. We want to raise about a half million dollars to continue to generate more native trait genetic products. Again, these are non-GMOs. And get the, or get the intellectual property secured. Patents are important. And eventually, probably within the next three to five years, secure for our investors about a 40% return on investment by being acquired by one of our collaborators. We could even have a bidding war. And all of this because of the crazy weather we have. Speaking of which, before we go out and brave the cold again, could I interest you in a cup of coffee? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Jim, thank you. All right, James Frederick from uh, Native Traits LLC. All right, so all the pictures have been up. You've got all the information. The judges are making notes, as you can see. Um, I'm going to ask the judges now to retire to your deliberation room where you will not see another human being until you come out with a solution, a winner. All right. They'll score the presentations, prepare their comments for the presenters, and when we come back, there will be feedback for you guys. So you will hear from the panel of experts to say what was missing, what was not missing, what they liked, what they didn't like. Um, so in, with that, if you guys would all go move into the front row there. And at this point, we will be back with the, uh, with the announcement of the winners at 8 o'clock, and you'll hear from, uh, from a return from the... Actually, the present champion from last year at that time, too. So back now to the uh, lovely overachiever, Diane Durantz. GLEQ has merged with the Small Business Foundation of Michigan, and we're now my quest. <laughs> uh, the combined organization will expand and grow the programs that we've had, and we will be adding new initiatives. We're positioning um, to uh, continue uh, our legacy programs, including the GLEQ Business Plan Competition, and we'll be announcing the awards uh, for the GLEQ competition in just a few minutes. In the meantime, I'd first like to introduce Jan Ness, CEO of Online Tech, who is the founding chairman of the MyQuest Board of Directors. <laughs> Chris, 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 Chris. Good to see you again, Chris. Hey, everybody. Uh, just a couple minutes here. Is this going to work? Yes. So, uh, as Diane mentioned, we, um, over the last six months, uh, have uh, done a lot of work and, and merged the Small Business Foundation of Michigan out of Lansing. We have about thousands of uh, small, uh, growing businesses that uh, want to grow more and want to help you grow. Uh, we've merged that organization with the unbelievable work that Diane and that board has done at GLEQ. And before I say any more, we've got to give a round of applause to, to that woman and that organization. You wouldn't be here without it. And basically, you know, our vision is it's GLEQ 2.0. Uh, it's incredible what GLEQ has done uh, the past decade uh, with pennies. Uh, so we want to ramp up the resources that Diane has. We want to ramp up the energy. We want to ramp up the acceleration. We want to ramp up the results because they are terrible in Michigan. Let me give you a stat. In 1977, there were 40 startups per 10,000 people. What do you think it is today? I think it's more or less. How many people think it's more than that? This is 1977. ACE didn't exist, GLEQ didn't exist, none of that stuff. How many people think it was more? How many people think it was less? Today it's 20. One half. 
That means in my lifetime, we will have zero entrepreneurs in Michigan. That's not a good trend. That stinks. And we are working our butts off to change that. Imagine where it would be if these organizations hadn't done what they're doing. The United States went through the same uh, decline, just south of 70 to just south of 35. We are not more entrepreneurial than we were before. We need to fix that. And my quest is part of that. So if I can get this right here, that's our logo. Thank you very much for uh, Cam. Cam, are you in here? He did a great job on this. What, what's the name of his company? Uh, Traction out of Lansing. He did, he did all this stuff, did a great job for it, did it in record time too. Uh, and I'm not an easy person to work for when it comes to schedules. So thank you very much, Cam. Here's what we're all about, guys. Here's our vision. Making Michigan the state of entrepreneurship. We mean what we say there. Make Michigan the state of entrepreneurship. Let's all say that. Michigan, the state of entrepreneurship. That's what we need to do. The only thing is, uh, the good news is, we've already done this. We used to be one of the most entrepreneurial states in the world. I mean, at least in the country and in the world. Henry Ford, all the whole, Chrysler, the entire automotive company. Uh, and, a, and a guy, I, I don't know if you guys know Edward Lowe. Anybody here know Edward Lowe? Um, so he, he took sand, put it in a bag in the 50s, and sold it as kitty litter for 10 bucks a bag, built a company, and sold that to Purina for $300 million here in Michigan. And it surprises me how few people know what kind of entrepreneurial uh, person he was. And he, he left a bunch of money, $100 million to the Entrepreneurial Foundation, or Edward Lowe Foundation of Entrepreneurial Studies. Uh, so he's another guy we'd like to have, uh, we'd, like to, we'd like to see a couple of you um, uh, get there one day too. So that's our goal, and, and here's how we know when we've achieved it. We anticipate seeing these, these headlines, and we're serious. We're totally serious about seeing these. People laugh at me when I say this, but they laughed when I bought a data center company in 2003 and said I was dumb as a doorknob. They're not laughing today. <clears throat> Let's read these. Michigan. Constant business formation and growth rate. Wall Street Journal. How many of you think that's possible for us to claim in 2024? Come on, guys. Jesus. <laughs> You're in the wrong room. Companies lead the Inc. 500, not the Inc. 5000, the Inc. 500 for the third consecutive year. Oh, Michigan companies lead the Inc. 500 for the third, did I say, say third consecutive year. Are these headlines real? How many people think that's real? Come on, you guys, geez. We need some, we need some believers around here. Back to the future, Michigan retakes historic place as innovation leader. And we don't want to read these in the Ann Arbor News. We want to read these in the U.S. News and World Report and the Wall Street Journal. This is doable, you guys. And there's nobody else who's going to do this for us but us. What is behind Michigan's population boom? Opportunity. You know, everybody talks about poverty and wanting to, to focus on poverty. Uh, which uh, you know, I was born in Malaysia and I saw a lot of poverty growing up. I know poverty. It's, it's really ugly. Um, but I, I really believe um, this is a great way to address that issue. Uh, and so I, I, I use the term, um, let's, not, let's not so much focus on getting rid of poverty, poverty. Let's focus on driving personal wealth. If you drive people's personal wealth, They'll, they'll get out of poverty. So let's focus on what they can go do and make and not focus on the misery that they are in. And that's what MyQuest wants to help do. Thanks, everybody. And get involved. Thank you, Jan. Let's see. Okay. Uh, more than 200 Michigan-based entrepreneurial ventures participated in the GLEQ business plan competition this fall. And executive summaries were submitted in December and were reviewed by 85 judges that work with us on a volunteer basis. 
The winners have been selected based on the scores they received on their written plan. And in addition to the competition awards and the new business idea and emerging company categories, we have some special awards that we like to make. And here to announce the first two is Kevin Sabosky. Kevin has been GLEQ's coach advocate for many years, and he is now my Quest's coach advocate. Thank you. Good evening. I, I always, uh, this is one of my favorite part of the year to announce these awards. You know, um, with the Coach of the Year Award, really what we're celebrating is, is we're picking a person, but we're really celebrating the contribution that all these coaches uh, contribute to the participants. You know, incredible resources of, of time and energy and experience and knowledge to work with these guys to help them improve their business plan and really help them become successful in business. So uh, I assigned coaches and gotten to know a whole lot of the coaches that participate in GLEQ and really appreciate and respect the contribution that people make. And this is just a small part of, of how we recognize that contribution. So uh, what I do is I ask the teams to nominate their coach. And so I, I use that sort of what the, what the teams themselves seem to think are very good coaches. And then I go through them and talk to them, get their feedback and, and pick them. And uh, this this year's was or this cycle's was really easy to pick, and I wanted to read a little bit about what that what that uh, nomination, what she wrote. <clears throat> I know I've learned more about myself and how to manage my business than I ever could have on my own without Nancy. To me, that is the most important thing GLEQ has offered me. To see and understand a world I couldn't see, trapped since 2008, and now I have a new outlook going forward to 2012. 2014. I went into this competition wanting to, to, to win the business plan competition, but I found that my personal growth is more than awards, awards can say. So the, the a winner for this quarter or this cycle is Nancy Matias. You can clap now. I have to work on my presentation skills. Clearly, I didn't give some some feedback that there should be. What did I miss? The drum roll. I missed the drum roll next year. Um, Nancy could not be here this evening, and I will accept the reward, or the award for her, and I'll deliver that to her when I see her. So thanks, Nancy. And thanks to all the other coaches. How, could we see a show of hand of the coaches in the, in the audience here? We have over 150 coaches that participate, and we assign every cycle. So that's you know an incredible amount of time and energy that people provide. So thanks, Nancy, and thanks to the rest of the coaches. We also select an entrepreneur that, that exemplifies the personality traits, practices, and spirit that will lead to success, regardless of whether their current business succeeds or whether they win the competition. But we all meet those people that just set you on fire, that you just look at them and you say, you're going to succeed. I don't know why necessarily, but there's just something about you. And so we, we pick uh, an entrepreneur that sort of showcases that. It's kind of fun to look back over the years at how some of those people have, have uh, fared, and it's, we're doing a pretty good job of picking some good winners. I asked the coaches to pick, and uh, the criteria that we use, because you have to pick something, so some of the things that we say, what is the spirit of entrepreneurship, the things that we pick are integrity, passion, commitment, compassion, and coachability. You know, obviously, coachability... Our coaches are picking these guys, so they've got to be pretty coachable to, for them to show up. So, um, the, the winner's coach this time was the coach was Fred Peplo. I asked them, I asked the coaches to select the people that, when they worked with them, they just really exemplified everything great about uh, entrepreneurship. So, here's a few things that Fred said about our winner. Uh, Rich not only politely sought my comments, as you would expect, he constantly asked questions around them to expand his understanding of what I was trying to get at with the question. He and I talked on evenings and weekends, including between games at his child's soccer tournament where he was coaching. Sound familiar to any of you? He always wanted to get the comment right and made it clear to the reader. He often said that if I had a question on something, he was not done. So, you know, the, the people that recognize that they can't do it on their own. They need the help of others. So I'd like to announce the Spirit of Entrepreneurship Award winner, Rich Daniels from FunPack. Rich? Do you have the awards? Congratulations. 
congratulations. No pictures? It's a good thing I didn't bring my tie. Oh. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Good job. Good. Thanks for Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Kevin. Great job. And now I'd like to invite Mish Saboski up to announce our Vision to Action Challenge winner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take a break now and just stand here and breathe rather than all the running around I've been doing. Um, so I had the distinct pleasure of uh, really driving Vision to Action, um, the Vision to Action Challenge. Uh, last year we introduced a, a new track to the GLEQ Business Plan Competition, and it was called the Vision to Action Challenge. We had two objectives uh, with this new edition. First, uh, we wanted startup and entrepreneurs to assess the viability of their concept by having them investigate the market demand and customer validation. Uh, second, we really wanted them uh, to help them establish companies uh, to identify action-oriented next steps. Um, that's always a real challenge. Uh, you've got a vision, but what's the next thing you do? There seems like a million things. Many of our entrepreneurs stepped up to the challenge. Uh, these participants found new markets, they pivoted when they needed to, discovered processes to help them grow. Uh, one of my favorite pieces was getting an email saying, uh, please forgive us, I'm so sorry, but we can't continue. We have a customer we have to deliver to. I'm like, ah, no, you have to finish. Uh, I'm pleased to announce the Vision to Action Challenge winners, our two very fun fellows, uh, the founders of You Know What, Stephen Sherman and Jack Dean. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. They want us to go this way. Uh, oh, I guess so. And now to present the New Business Idea Awards, I'm happy to invite Sam Hogue, venture partner with Open Prairie Ventures, instructor in entrepreneurship at Grand Valley State University, past member of the GLEQ Board of Directors, and my personal favorite, former GLEQ winner. So Sam, if you'll come up here. Thanks, Diane. It's uh, great to be a GLEQ alumnus, and uh, I get to work with lots of companies at lots of stages and in various roles, and I can say a commonality, especially in Michigan among a lot of them, is they got their, their start right here at GLEQ and oftentimes in this new business idea category. So very happy to be doing these awards. Uh, so to cut right to it, uh, third place for $1,000 is Wave Aircraft, Inc. You want... Descriptions read? Wave, <laughs> Wave yeah, sorry. West Bloomfield based Wave, Air, Wave Aircraft shortens total travel time with a special designed aircraft. Amphibian planes do not fly high and, or high and fast. High and fast business class aircraft cannot land on water. By combining the best features of both, Wave Aircraft is the first to offer the business class market a single aircraft that will go virtually anywhere, land anywhere, and get there fast. Perry DiClemente is the founder. He can't be here, so. Picture. Where do you need us? Oh, okay, because okay. we're over here. Okay, great. Oh, you got okay. it. Okay. Well, we can be in here. Okay. okay. 
The second place winner for $1,500 is Sentinel LLC. Detroit-based Sentinel offers Identilock, a new and safe way to secure handguns. Using fingerprint technology, it allows for split-second access to a loaded gun by the gun owner while simultaneously keeping it safely locked and un unusable when in the hands of others. Founder Omar Kiani. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry. Got it. It just says me. <laughs> All right. Um, and the, or should I? Got it. There we go. And the $2,000 first place winner in the new business idea category is Microlam Technologies LLC. Kalamazoo-based Microlam offers leading-edge technology that increases productivity, provides a better surface, and reduces tooling and finishing costs for companies that would benefit from the softening of hard materials and reduced brittleness during machining. Uh, the award is being accepted by Deepak Ravindra, co-founder and chief technical officer. Thank you. Now, um, it's my uh, pleasure to invite to the podium Ken Kuski, who uh, was on my GLEQ board of directors and is continuing on on the board of directors of MyQuest. Ken is the uh, CEO of MidMichigan Innovation Center and the president of Blue Water Angels. He's also an entrepreneur and C uh, CEO of IP3. So, Ken. <laughs> Down, okay. Well, this is a really exciting opportunity for me. I spend a lot of time talking about the need for money in the state for our, our seed companies, our startups, uh, and really focus on that issue. But if I've got money to disperse, I don't need to talk about it anymore. Uh, but rather, I can talk about the phenomenal companies that we are recognizing and awarding tonight. But I want to say that we have, every one of you that participated in this competition, uh, did something wonderful for your own business, for your own community, and for the state. And we at MyQuest and the old GLEQ uh, want to thank you for your participation, uh, not just for yourselves, but for, for what you've done for your entire communities. So in third place, an award of $2,500 goes to Campus Commandos. Do I need to explain what... They're not counter shooters. Let me explain what they do. This Detroit based Campus Commandos is a campus marketing firm that helps major brands like HP, eBay, and Nike sell products to college students throughout stu through student ambassador programs. These programs offer experience, difficulty in, experience difficulty in recruiting high turnover and poor student performance. To address these issues, the company is launching a mobile application that organizes a large pool of available candidates and motivates them to accept and complete marketing tasks by using challenging game-based incentives. Maria, uh, I've got to put on, sorry. Lalandi of Bizdom is here to accept the award on behalf of Adam Grant. Is Maria here? I know Maria, I didn't realize that's who it was. She was here to accept Well, I'll take that for her. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I was with her on Tuesday saying we need more money for these companies, yeah, so I'm she'll sure be very can. happy to hear this. Okay, well. <laughs> no one from the company either? No, we, uh, we had arranged for Maria to, to step, step in, in because in. they are one of the um, Bizdom companies. Yeah. Well, that would have... well, our second place award, we're stepping up the ante. To... Oh, move the aerials. Here. Okay, there we go. Should I, I'll click on the next. Uh, our second place award of $3,000 goes to Phase IQ. Do you say it that way? I think it's 
Phasic. Phasic, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Plymouth, Michigan-based Phasic provides an ultra-specific diagnostic platform for detecting protein biomarkers in biological samples. Phasic's next-generation technology addresses the shortcomings of protein microarray technologies, namely accuracy and the cost of test development which are necessary to advance the use of protein microarrays in life science research and clinical diagnostics. The award is being accepted by Arlene Simon, PhD, co-founder and VP of technology development. Congratulations. Chris, did you see that? I got my glasses off for the photo. Yeah, so. <laughs> and, and stepping up even higher, our first place winner will receive a $5,000 check. Um, and uh, in further recognition, the first place award of $5,000 goes to Inventive. Detroit-based Inventive brings mobile power generation to commercial fleets utilizing medium-duty trucks. Through a pat patent, well, let's welcome them. <laughs> Through a patent pending drive system, the company uses the same devices that electricity, uh, electrically propel cars, uh, yeah, propel the vehicle to generate power for electricity driven accessories on job sites. Electric utilities and telecommunications providers, for example, need a source of electric power at job sites. I want to avoid the fuel used, the emissions, and the noise of extended, extensive idling and expensive trailer-mounted generators. The award is being accepted by David Stenson, founder and CEO. On behalf of uh, Michigan Growth Capital Symposium, I want to um, announce that our top winner, uh, Dave Stenson, will have a presentation spot on June 17th at the Michigan Growth Capital Symposium. So congratulations, Dave, on that. The uh, Michigan Growth Capital Symposium will be held June 17th and 18th at the Marriott in Ypsilanti. And GLEQ uh, Business Plan Competition Awards will be presented the morning of June 17th at a breakfast awards event, followed by breakout sessions. So we hope to see all of you um, on June 17th. And now I would like to see if our judges are ready. Do you think they are? Uh, no. No? <laughs> Oh, that could happen. Yeah. Well, the next cycle of the GLEQ Business Plan Competition will launch with registrations on Monday, February 10th. And participants will have until May to complete their business plans and executive summaries. And as I said, our awards will be June 17th. And now I will let you do your singing and dancing routine. We can do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Appreciate it. And congratulations to all the winners. Um, I, just, just a little observation. I don't know if you noticed this or not. When uh, Ken was up here explaining what uh, Phasic does, uh, Arlene Simon was standing over here, and her eyes were darting around the room and rolling. And without saying a word, she was saying, maybe one other person in the room knows what's going on here. So that's the beauty of this entrepreneurial evening. We have such a wide spectrum of, uh, of success. So let's take a second, bring all the entrepreneurs who competed tonight uh, in the elevator. One. Give them a big round of applause. Come up here. Okay, while we're waiting for the judges, we have something that, uh, that's going to be delightful for uh, 
uh, for all of you, actually. I'm going to bring David Fuhrer up here. He's our current trophy holder, and he's here tonight to give us a little update on Cure Launcher. Uh, David is, uh, is uh, relinquishing his trophy tonight, so it's a rather emotional moment. So if David breaks down, you'll understand why, all right? But if you would, please welcome to the, uh, to this, to the front, David Fuhrer. Thank you, Chris. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's great to be back at ACE uh, a year later and to see Michigan entrepreneurship thriving. It's a fantastic event. Uh, and nice to see so many faces that have helped Cure Launcher over the last year uh, in the audience tonight. Uh, it's a great network of people and tremendous resource. So uh, ACE 13 was a pivotal moment for Cure Launcher. We were just starting our funding round. And I'm pleased to report that in the last 12 months since we started that round, we've raised $1.3 million in funding. Uh, I had the pleasure of being on a panel tonight, which is how do you do it as an entrepreneur? And so uh, for us, it came in the form of Founders Equity, uh, an angel fund invested in us, and then, of course, the Michigan Pre-Seed Equity Capital Match, uh, which has given us a great slingshot. And ACE is a huge reason we were on the radar to make that happen. So thank you. Thank you. So... Thank you very much. So uh, we had an idea about an, a year and a half ago, and that idea was that we could do better at helping people who are facing a disease get into a clinical trial to help them. And so over the last year and a half, we've partnered with leading organizations like the Livestrong Foundation, who helped me personally go through cancer twice, and the National Stroke Association. And as a result of our work over the last 18 months, We've helped stroke survivors get into clinical trials so they could walk better and helped cancer patients shrink tumors. It's an honor, truly an honor. Thank you. So, um, I thought uh, Peter's uh, keynote tonight was eloquent. It was uh, enjoyable and inspiring to hear his talk. I think he did a great job uh, summarizing the disintermediation of industries, and that's what we've been a part of, and it's been exciting to interrupt and innovate in a space to help people. So the question of us then is, as entrepreneurs, how are we putting that support to work and creating a better place for people in the world? Uh, and so now Cure Launcher is partnering with the top global pharmaceutical companies to help them think differently about how they connect with patients for clinical trials. And we're now a preferred partner to top five global pharmaceutical companies. So, thank you. Thank you. And so I'll leave you with one thought. Uh, early in my career, I had the pleasure of studying innovation at Harvard. And one of the professors, uh, Michael Tushman, who's renowned for his innovation work, said something that's always stuck with me, and I'd like to share it with you. Michael defined entrepreneurship as the relentless pursuit of our goals without the resources currently controlled to achieve them. I think that's pretty profound. Yeah. It's a good place to be. And while I completely agree with Michael Tushman in the first part of it about relentless pursuit, I respectfully disagree with him, and I apologize, for saying that there are not resources available to do it because ACE and our Michigan ecosystem provide those resources for entrepreneurs. So thank you to everybody for helping entrepreneurs make their dreams into realities. Well, the judges are still commiserating at this point, so... Oh, I'm sorry, they're all done commiserating. And they are entering uh, once again. Now, what we're going to do before we announce the winner and, uh, is, uh, first of all, get a big round of applause for these judges for the work that they put in on this. Thank you. <clears throat> and to show you how rigorous uh, it actually was, uh, four left the room, only three came back. <laughs> tough stuff. Tough stuff back there. Um, but what we would like to do very quickly is uh, go over each of the presenters and uh, get the comments from the judges, as a matter of fact. This is the coveted Ace Elevator Pitch Competition Award, all right, that she just had to pry from David's hands, actually. <laughs> all right, so with that, judges, um, those of you who would like to make comment 
uh, on Jeff Johnson, Supported Intelligence LLC of East Lansing. I think the mics are on. Now. So in terms of supported intelligence, we found the pitch a bit difficult to follow. Um, it was so generalized in terms of the, the pain points as to be almost useless for us. It was a lot of buzzwords, a lot of jargon. Um, rapid recursive toolbox. You guys might want to unpack that a little bit in terms of what it means. I mean, just walk up to somebody and say, what do you think a rapid recursive toolbox is? And so I think you guys are really focused on the technology, what you're trying to achieve with it, but you've got to take it to a point that you can break it down so that it's palatable and understandable to the general public. And one of the suggestions I always give to presenters is give it to somebody, give your pitch to somebody in high school, and if they understand what you're saying, then you're in great shape. But we thought it was, I mean, in terms of articulation, clarity, understandability, that we thought it was great. But just in terms of your pain point and your value prop, you've just got to sort of um, drill that down a little bit more. So, uh, Jeff, you are not in violation of that because you gave it to somebody who really didn't get through high school. So that was, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> all right, were there any judges that wanted to make a comment on this? Or is that, you're giving we're me all, cumulative. We've all, we've, all fine. Decided, we've all sort of, Combined on ours and okay, excellent. And conquering. All right. Uh, Michael Curley from uh, Celetics of Grand Rapids. That's me. I thought you did a great job with your presentation. Very clear, very good to understand. You did the, the right thing of identifying the market size and the market pain point for us up front. We could easily identify with that. Um, the stage... You know, the, the one of the things I always like, and I'll say this to all the presenters, is if almost in the very first sentence you say you can tell me what you do instead of leading us through, you know, our company solves this issue. In the first point, that really helps gather the attention and focus really the, on learning what your company's all about. And I'd say that to you. You talked a little bit about it, but it wasn't until about 30 seconds in. I want you to capture me in that first 10 seconds. Uh, high expectations. <laughs> The, the uh, other comment is um, a little bit of a disconnect saying you needed $100,000 to launch the company when we know, the, from our own experience, the size of the market, the size of the players there, and whether or not that's a realistic expectation. All right. Thank you, judges. Appreciate that. Uh, next up, uh, Angsgar Struther, uh, A2B Bike Share of Ann Arbor. Okay, that would be me. Um, Frankly, if I hadn't read an article recently in one of the papers about you, uh, I, I would have really not understood at all what you were talking about other than running bikes. Um, you know, I, I just uh, I couldn't pick up on, you know, what the value proposition was. I couldn't pick up on what the competition was other than maybe walking. Uh, it, the, the, the presentation, I think, needs to be reformatted and reorganized and, um, and put into a, a more understandable state. Uh, you, you mentioned, uh, I think, $5,000 and then $7,500. And just, it, it didn't flow. Things were all over the place. And, and I, f frankly, had I not read the article, I, I can't remember which one of the local papers I read it. I, I mean, I wouldn't have had a clue. I, I'm sorry about that. But. No, it's fine. I got nervous and everything went in. Complete wrong order. <laughs> I'm gonna be quite honest. I uh, okay. Finished. <laughs> 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 Give I the see. Guy a big hand. Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, see, honesty is one of the factors we judge on, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you. See, the, the beauty of your disorganization is that I understood every word. <laughs> so. You are fine. All right, great. I can Thank see you. you on a bike, Chris. Yeah, no, a lot of people would like to see me on a bike. Um, and now, um, Naren Bella Subramania. Huh? All right. <laughs> Hospital Connect of Farmington Hills. So that's me. Uh, and first of all, thank all of you guys for having the courage to do this. This is a very difficult task to stand up in front of absolute strangers and be judged. Right? It's, it's hard, so everyone should be commended and, 
And folks in the audience, it's tough. It's really tough. So to everyone. Now to you. <laughs> I, think, I think you've des- described a, a big problem. Describing how that affects workflow for hospitals is a crucial issue. Okay? And taking the problem and making it contextual is what's important for the investor. I think that, that needs to be described. The biggest hurdle that you didn't talk about, the elephant in the room is admissions is governed by software. Software is governed by a few major players in the industry. So unless you're in bed with Epic, unless you're in bed with Cerner, unless you're in bed with one of the big players, piercing that veil is going to be very, very difficult to do. So phrases like, we're going to, we think, we might, all those forward-looking statements, throw them out the window. Doesn't matter. What matters is we are building a cooperative partnership with Cerner, and they're going to be our distribution channel, and they are our acquirer. Trying to do this on your own is a tough road to hoe. But I think you identified a very useful problem. I think you have to be able to describe how you're going to solve the problem inside of five seconds. It's a big data issue. It's a big problem. If you solve it, you can be a big winner. Good feedback. Congratulations. All right, next, uh, Jason Beal, if you would, from uh, Regain Go of Detroit. Hi, Jason. You did a really great job in terms of framing the problem, talking about the pain point, how you were going to be solving it. I mean, you just had everybody's been in that situation where, I mean, you know, Angie's list, it's crap. It's really difficult to work with. I mean, seriously. I mean, it's completely Just a minute. I want to put that in my notes. Crap. I just, no, I mean, but I've used the tool, and I, you know, I, I have a house that's, you know, in fairly decent, you know, need of regular repair or maintenance, and you want somebody that you can trust in your house. And so that pain point is really well heard, and you, you're incredibly articulate about it. One of the challenges that we saw was really around the revenue model. And, you know, you've got the challenge of not only do you have the, the contractor side, but, you know, you're, you're going to be creating the, you know, you've got the fair free, freemium sort of model on the other side, like how are you going to get to both of these markets at the same time in a way that will loop them together? So that was the the piece that we felt was missing was, you know, it's $10 per project, per contract, but you've got to get that to a significant scale to get revenue out of this. So um, with that, it was a great presentation, you know, again, really articulate and, and very well framed, but just, you know, the tweak that we had was around the revenue model. Excellent stuff. Okay, finally, James Friedrich, uh, Native Traits LLC of Kalamazoo. Like the others, we appreciated the way that you articulated uh, the the pr- problem, described the market. Uh, again, my particular bias would be for you to have used the GMO issue that we're all aware of, that we read a lot of as your opening line to say, as we know, the agriculture market is a huge market. Farmers are trying to address that by uh, planting and improve their productivity, planting specific seeds to allow them to be effective. We have a native solution uh, to that, and we are able to use this software technology and others to help introduce those native solutions to the seed market. You know, having something like that allows us to understand where your place is, uh, able to understand the market pain and the market solution. Um, But you did a when I think about your presentation as an overall, I think you covered all the points. We understood at the end of saying, here's what you're about to do, and here's how you're going to attack the market, here's the market channel that you're going to use, here's the six major players, here's your relationships with them, and in all of, all of that. Um, my bias is just do that up front so you capture me. All right. Thanks, Mark, and thank you, judges. I appreciate it. Great, great feedback for all of them. And, uh, and, and, Dale, I think I'm really glad that you emphasized the fact that being up here and doing this is not an easy thing to do. And what happens is your first thought is, I'm going to make a mistake, and it manifests itself in your throat, and then it turns off your mind. And so it's a very difficult thing to overcome. And congratulations on all of it. And all of you being up here, remember, you've been vetted 
you, you're up here because you're the representatives of the best possible, the fittest of the fit, so to speak. So congratulations on that piece of it. Now, what usually happens is, we, you know, we have the, the envelope brought up here and hermetically sealed, and I make a big announcement, and streamers come out. Well, the budget shrunk a little. There's no streamers. <laughs> um, but the fact is that I think the best way to do this is to have one of the judges announce the winner. And uh, everybody's looking at you, Lauren. I think you're kind of stuck with this. Uh... And so this year's uh, elevator pitch competition is... Won by Native Traits. Ah, congratulations. James Friedrich, Native Trades, LLC, Kalamazoo. All right. Well, again, congratulations to, uh, to all of you for being up here. And everybody learned something tonight. I know I certainly did. Um, and and uh, Lauren, uh, Terry, uh, Dale, and, uh, and Mark, thanks so much for the time you put in and, and your expertise. We appreciate you bringing that tonight. Uh, with that, I will turn the floor back over to Diane Durant and say it has been um, totally, totally fun to be up here tonight and very rewarding. I, I thank you for having me as part of this, Diane, and I thank all of you out there for driving this economic machine because you do. Keep going. Did somebody lose this phone? It's kind of nice. Somebody found it. Did anybody lose it? Well, if anybody uh, hears of anyone that lost this phone, you now know that I have the phone. Is so. that an iPhone? It is not an iPhone. No, no, sorry. Guess again. What kind of phone is it? <laughs> no, um, please remember to use your uh, donor card that you received. Um, uh, don't forget about that as you uh, head out. You can do that at the uh, computers on the registration table, or you can do it when you get home. Um, we do have a bit of an uh, afterglow if you want to get, it looks like there's cake. I can tell because <laughs> the judges have some. Um, you are welcome to uh, have some refreshments before you head out. And I very much look forward to seeing you at ACE 15 next year. Thank you. 